Property acquisition can save a user a tremendous amount of time by cutting down on a large number of single step actions that occur on most of your projects. To help reduce this work, you're going to examine how two existing acquisition rules work and then make your own rule. Begin by opening the Project Setup tool located on the Ribbon, Home tab, Project Panel. Once the dialog is open, select PNID Drawing Settings, PNID Class Definitions, and then Engineering Items. Expand Inline Assets, and then choose Hand Valves. Scroll down in the Properties until you see the Size and Spec Values. These are child nodes at this level in a project, meaning that they are defined higher up the food chain, actually one level up in Inline Assets. The first thing to note is that when these items were set up, the acquisition was defined as the property was added. Once the property is defined, you can select a data source. The data source can be derived from a class object, from project properties, such as the project data for the client, or from drawing properties, such as the drawing name and number in an off-page connector. The rules for size and spec were both based on selection lists that were defined for the pipeline segments. Look at Acquisition. Pick the cell and then pick Edit Acquisition. This shows you that the pipeline segment overall class was defined as the category, and the actual property is the pipeline size or spec. Select Cancel to close this dialog. Go back to the default value. Acquisition can occur in one of two ways. The first is a constant contact when acquisition is selected. If the value on the source object changes, the receiver updates automatically. When this is set to initialization, the acquisition occurs only when the connection is first made. Any changes have to be made as an override. Now make a new one. All instrumentation in this project is based on a loop number. Right now this information is just manually assigned when the instrument is placed. But what if the loop number can get its information from the primary piece of equipment, such as the pump? First, you need to define the primary property as the source. Select Equipment, as you want all equipment to have this number. Select Add. For the property name, type in Instance Number with no spaces. For the display name, put a space between instance and number. Select numeric and then click OK. When the equipment is placed, you can add the instance number as needed. Right now, to label a pump P100, add 100 as the loop number. Next, go to the lines section. Add a new property, Instance Loop. Set this as an acquisition. When the Select Data Source dialog appears, set the category to Equipment. You'll see the Instance Number as a property, so select it. Select OK. Select an Instrumentation Device. Select Instrumentation as the current class. Add another rule, naming this one Instrument Instance. Make this one an acquisition as well. From the Select Data Source dialog, select the Signal Line Segments category. Pick this one since you only place instruments along signal lines. Pick Instance Loop. What you set up now is a series of connected properties. The number added to the original source should carry all the way through to the instrument. To check this, go to the drawing. Select the pump. Under Properties, locate the Instance Number property. It's populated with 100. Select the instrument line and locate the instance loop on the properties palette. It's also marked 100. 
Select the first instrument and locate the instrument instance on the properties palette. You guessed it, it's 100. To test this, return to the data manager and change this first rule, instance number on the equipment. Change it to 102 and return to the drawing. The instrument line and first instrument all have returned the same number. This is just a quick demonstration of the benefit of an acquisition rule. Learn how this works, and you will have a more coordinated set of construction documents.